Welcome! Do not attempt to fix your internet, it is a black screen, because typically I record the beginning at the end of my recording. Things went wrong, but I can tell you now that what this video is about is learning what goes wrong when new users for Blender create hair in Blender. And then we move on to correcting those mistakes through a better setup for setting up for Blender hair. It has an awful lot of value for new users, and there are some neat little tricks for intermediate users. Everything goes wrong because I tweak too many settings and putts around a little bit too much before creating children. We get all the way up to that point, and then with this edit, I try to gently let you down. But if you'd like to set up better hair, and you're new to Blender, and it's been a real confusing ride trying to decipher Blender's hair settings in the particle panel, this may be the video for you. Get ready. Hello, hi, and hola, handling greeting. You know where you haven't found me yet, and I would really like it if you did. I think it would be just wonderful if you and I could connect where the, uh, the big blue bird lives here, and uh, come and join me and take a look and all that good stuff. I've only got a couple followers, but I do love a community. One of the things I want to do to help start a thriving community of new users within Blender and some more intermediate to advanced users who help give me advice to digest is help the foundation of hair. Not only are there tons of hair jokes that we can make while working on hair, it's something that a lot of new users simply put up and then don't fully understand, and the rest of us go, oh, for Pete's sake, well, welcome to Blender, and the hair is always the same. Let's make some mistakes. This is definitely going to be a part one, because I could, as I'm still researching for myself, I could translate a lot of what I've learned into things that new users can benefit from. I'm going to press the number two at the top of my keyboard to get to the second layer, make it visible, and hide the camera and lamp that way. My Shift A will get me a plane creation for mesh, and I will just GZ1 to get it one unit up. One blender unit. Maybe we should discuss that for a moment. It is equal to a meter or three feet, and that's important because it deals with scale. Our plane is obviously two blender units by two blender units, and that makes it... Sorry, while I do this and try to think at the same time, that makes it 6 feet by 6 feet, so 36 square feet if Blender is using scale. And this is the sort of thing that a lot of Blender users are very happy to tout, is that Blender is essentially a happy, physically correct modeling system. We're going to put that to the test because it all falls apart when we try to do hair. So we get a basic object. This is now the Particles tab. I go, I change it from emitter to hair, and voila, we have hair. One thing that new users get confused by is why is it sticking straight up. If I press Alt and A, it begins to animate along the timeline. As soon as I use Hair Dynamics, the hair has a way to fall. Let's have a quick look at the fall of hair. <laughs> And I will Alt-A to stop, since the hair is now in some sort of resting gravitational position. Looking at hair is kind of tough. Uh, this is solid view. We can see that it's very faceted. And if I were to press the letter N, lock my camera to the view, look through my camera, and then get back to that view where I just was, I can render immediately with F12, activating my camera in the light layer, and I see this has many angular facets. This is something new users probably can't undo easily because Blender has hidden certain preview tools from obvious sight. Let's change the way Blender thinks about the geometry of hair. We'll go to the Render tab, pull down Geometry. Right now, the primitive for hair is line segments by default. Change it to curve segments. And here's, if it even makes a change, I haven't slowly examined everything. Going from line segments to curve segments already makes a massive improvement in the render. Good. 
Now we're going to keep it at curved segments and we're going to do something else. Back to the Particles tab. Let's change the display so that it makes sense as we're viewing it. And there's a, there's a, unfortunately there's a lot of places where Blender is hiding a clean clean access to previewing what hair is going to look like. Now this is just the display tab, so technically it shouldn't change anything about the render until we change the render tab settings. So I'll do another render, and I'll hold this against the previous render. They are the same. I'm looking between slot 1 and slot 2. Slot 2 is where we changed the curve segments from line segments. Slot 1 is where we changed display settings. So logically, nothing in the render changed because we only changed the display. If I dare to change the segments at the top of the particles tab, I have to hit shift in the left arrow and alt and A to go back to the beginning of the timeline and then allow gravity to have a brand new effect on the change in hair settings. Every time we change hair settings, we got to go back and sort of let the simulation of hair run again. I render this change and it looks pretty smooth enough. This is where it was with five segments. This is where it is with six segments. Allowing for more segments allows for more droopy hair, hair to stay closer to the object. Perhaps it's a scalp or a pelt, or uh, I suppose you could use this for foliage in some way too. That helps to take care of the way we view hair. There is one more thing that I would like to tell new users before you get bored and tune out. Children. For hair on a scalp or a pelt, please don't use simple children. If you do have to use children and you have a slower computer, change your numbers from 10 and 100 to 5 and 30. These display and render settings will give you a pretty good advantage over the heavy weight of uh, 10 and 100. And 30 hairs, uh, 30 children per hair, there are a thousand hairs, I mean you're already talking about 30,000 hairs at render time. Simple children have a tendency to float above the surface of whatever is uh, emitting the hair. Now usually I can get that to show pretty strongly, but this time they seem to be behaving fairly well. Uh, I know that it won't stay fairly well. Interpolated children is the better way to go for hair. It seems like interpolated may be more confusing for you as a user, but if you want slightly better hair and you're a new user and you just got to have that hair, ribbons haven't been working, sculpting hair hasn't been working, and you've had disastrous hair consequences, <laughs> you've had bad hair days, then uh, don't be intimidated by an interpolated view of those hairs. Boy, is that distracting now. I hit T and N to get the tool shelf and the properties panel off to the side and home to maximize the view through my camera which is uh, stuck attached to my 3D view. So this is kind of where we are and the hair is using the material of the base object. I don't want to go into making hair material because that could take years, but the initial object has no material, so I'll give it a material of base. I will add to this object a second material called hair, and the only thing that will use it from the particles tab under render is the hair. Now when I change any aspect of this material, it will propagate over to the hair material. Now, uh, for what I think might be the final biggest mistake that an ambitious new user can make. Do you remember that I told you this plane is six feet by six feet in blender units? That makes this hair with a length of four, 12 feet long. Is that useful? If you scale down the object the hair is coming from, it's still 12 feet long. So your first problem could be that you're not respecting the scale of the object that has hair. And after you don't respect 
that scale, you are just left with Blender's biggest train wreck for hair. Um, I mean, that's, I, I don't even want to keep going with this hair because it is 12 feet long. And you could go ahead and, not segments, you go ahead and try to compensate for that by cutting things down and making things short. Now you say, well, two, two tenths of 12 feet is, uh, what is that, 2.4 feet. Well, that's still pretty long for hair. That's nearly one meter long hair. Your scalp is wrong. The object is messed up. The scale is all funny. Remember the object that I just scaled down in object mode? The scale of that object, of all objects here, should be 1, 1, 1. If I just type in 1, we go back to having our initial problem. If I look at the chat boards and realize that I can apply the new scale by hitting Control A, the hair goes back. The hair has a dependency upon the scale of that initial object. All right, scale and also how you are able to view the hair, how it bends, whether it's line segments or curve segments, and also how many steps, where did those steps go? That's render, here's display. How many steps are in the draw path for that hair? This goes up to seven, by the way. It maxes out at seven. So you can still encounter problems. Let's start all over with something like a head shape. Control N. Reload startup file. Good for us. Now, here we are at the beginning again. Blender 2.79. Hello, hi, hola, my handle, my greeting. Join me on Twitter. Thank you. Let's get started. That's why this is a part one, is because we really need to get a handle for new users. If you haven't already, go ahead and go to User Preferences and Add-ons and under Mesh, activate Extra Objects with a check mark. Exit that window that comes up and Shift A Mesh will give you access to the rounded cube. This rounded cube is something that's a bit of a godsend for a lot of people who use Blender because it is easy to map, it does not pinch, and it's made of quads. If that information is new to you, welcome to Blender. Keep searching the terminology. I try to use terminology whenever possible. This is one across the scale of XYZ. We know now that one as a unit means three feet. Although the scale is one, which I've just accidentally adjusted. Although the scale is one, the dimensions are two, two, two. If in object mode, if in object mode, oh, I can't. That's great. <laughs> there we go. If in object mode, I change one of the dimensions, I thought that was a little weird. Um, we accidentally change the scale. We don't ever want that scale to be anything but one. When you change the size of something in preparation for creating hair, do it in edit mode. Tab into edit mode. I know that this is six feet across in diameter because I can see that it spans two blender units. Can you see that? Yes, and I'm not locking my camera to view yet either. There we go. In order to make this head about, it's not really a head, okay? It's just a sphere, a uh, rounded cube. In order to make it about one foot in diameter, I need to scale this to one sixth its current size. I will hit S, and then on my number pad, divided by six. Ding, we're done. I can now move it up, G, Z, two, and hit enter. I've moved it, and apparently the decimal point at the same time. I've moved it up two units, meaning I've moved it up to where that one foot rounded cube diameter is about six feet running through the midline. May I tell you why I'm doing this? Remember, hair, okay? You won't have to do this with everything, but just pay attention. Shift A, something else you can have access to by user preferences, although it might be too soon for some of you, is an armature that is basic and a human. Where's that sphere? That sphere is in the location of the head. And it's all scaled, kinda, already. Granted, this rounded cube, if it were a head, is a little cartoony in nature, but 
I'm not going to concern myself with that right now. The reason being, if you start with your object and then put your hair, and then later try to slam an armature inside of it, which is totally cool. Um, I mean, it's not good workflow, but it's totally cool. This means you won't have to scale the object. You're already in position. All right, that's our big scale lesson. So that new users can prevent terrible accidents that there's just no walking away from. Because I don't want you to get good hair and then have to start all over. Go to faces, go to the bottom, pick the bottom four faces any way you know how. Good. Go to the side, come back, extrude those faces down. Now, control R and uh, put in some edges. I like to put in about 19 or so, running up the stock that we have created. Press the letter A, go back, take a look at the bottom, select those intersecting edges any way you know how. Go back to that view from the side. <laughs> orthographic. Activate your enabled proportional editing, either with the letter O, it even tells you the shortcut, uh, or by pressing that button, hit the letter S and shift Z. And now use your mouse wheel to get your proportional editing to editing sphere of influence to the bottom of the rounded cube. Uh, I prefer sharp and scale S Z and I'm going to do it like this and tab back into object mode five to go into um, ah, perspective view this is something like a hair stick we're gonna pretend that this is the head of an object we already know if you remember from just like a second ago that it's pretty much the height of an armature that blender can give you and don't sniff or raise your nose at those armatures Good Blender users spent a long time making those armatures really awesome. So if you're able to spend an hour or two putting hair on an object that can become a character, you will find great benefit to using those armatures. Helps to have your object and mesh already almost in place. Now we've got it. This thing is yours. I've got one for me because I'm running a tutorial. <laughs> It's called the hair stick. It's basically what you just did. I have to now remember a couple of simple things. Let me close up what we don't need. Let me run to geometry, which is exactly what you're going to do. The default is line segments. Before I even tinker with hair, I'm changing it to curve segments. This is an override for everything. Basically, a curved subdivision of four is going to be fine. Keep your computation simple for Blender. Let it stay at four. Any additional curved subdivisions can come from the particles tab once we create hair. Now, new users, welcome. This part gets sticky. If you're new, no pun intended, since this is what I'm calling the hair stick. <laughs> for lack of a better name. Hey, guess who makes ugly ears? Me. Uh... But I just wanted something, okay? There's no face, no nose, no lips. When I tab into edit mode, you can see that I have smoothed it with the subsurf. Ooh, pardon me. When you tab into edit mode, you see I smoothed it once, or did I, with the subsurf? Now I'm a little confused. Hang on. I don't want a modifier sitting here. So what I'm going to do is apply this, and now my mesh density is like this, okay? You can do something similar or keep it a low... It's just the ears are so ugly. I kind of want to keep it low poly, but those ears are hideous. Hideous. Will you forgive me if I just leave simple ears? Yeah, thanks. You're a doll. Okay. Now we have the lowest poly I can go to. Select where the hair will come from. So we can do that by selecting where the hair will not come from and going 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 that was control plus on the keyboard to uh, keep going with that selection once I did a um, uh, once I did an edge oh my gosh what is it called an edge is it rings 
loop of connected edges. I think that's what it was, but in face mode, it looks like I'm doing a ring of faces. Okay, I'm going to invert this selection with Control I, and I'm going to create a new vertex group. I'm going to call it Grow. I'm going to assign the current to that vertex group. This means that when we add hair, we can tell it to come out of this area. Uh, unless you have some funny joke about hairy ears, it's time to remove the ears from that vertex group. And uh, do it carefully, as you would do anything <laughs> that you don't want to make a mistake on. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see, this one seems to have played nicely and the other one didn't. Well, of course. Or well, whatever the case. Okay, so I'm now going to select the ones that I don't... You know, I think I'll pull it in even one more. Oop! Wrong button. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm going to remove my selected vertices from the uh, vertex group. And I'm just going to control tab V to get into vertices and select growth. And that is pretty much what I want to see. It gives us the ability for sideburns, for a mustache, for eyebrows, for a beard, and um, it is not an actual object person. Good for you. I wish I were running a timer so I don't talk too much. Okay, this thing. Let's give it a brand new material. Nothing has a material. Scratch that. We have a base material. Here it is. Good memory. I want a new material, just like I mentioned before. I'm going to call it hair. I'm not going to assign it to anything. I'm just going to give myself some hair. I'm going to assign base to a new material, but I'm going to make a copy of base. And I'm totally fine with that thus far. I want base to stay on this selection. I want base one to go to everything else. Control I inverts my selection. Selecting base one in the materials and hitting assign puts base one to everything else. Although they look the same, we're going to be really deeply messing with base. I activated caps lock and it doesn't matter. All right, now we can select by material. That's super handy. More importantly, we need to start cutting this thing up so we can unwrap it. Uh, new users, come with me. Intermediate users, you know where I'm going, but I have a surprise for you too. I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. Alt, right click, select the edge that goes right down the middle. And I'm also going to Alt, shift, right click, select the, um, you know, collar or whatever neck division that clearly marks the head and now from an orthographic view in wireframe mode from the side I will sh I will sh I will select she on a keyboard and uh, press the mouse wheel to deselect Ooh, everything going up to that collar or whatever it would be I can do that again because I don't really care right now about a seam a UV seam going anywhere else. I just want to make sure that I get the uh, face unwrapped in such a way that we might really unwrap a face. There's that center seam, but I don't want it to run up the center. So I press C on the keyboard and mouse select up to about where I can imagine the hairline beginning. What do we have? We have this thing. Uh, I'm going to control E on the keyboard and mark that as a seam. I'm going to hover over this and press the letter L. Bad news. Bad news. Why? Bad news. Bad news. Bad news. That wasn't supposed to happen. Let's do this in face mode. That is supposed to happen. So, okay. Face. <laughs> what is it called? Face something. Face select. Yes. Hovering over where it's mapped and then pressing the letter L helps you get everything that is linked by seam. It's a default. If it doesn't happen for you, you could uh, do it yourself. I don't want the ears in there. I thought that it would ignore the ears. Let me go to base one, deselect anything that's base one, return to base, press the letter U, 
unwrap that which is selected. Control, right, 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 and I'm here at the UV editing layout. Pretty cool shortcut, right? I invented that. Okay, this is this. Spread out. Good. Come with me, new users. Make a new image. Let's call it scalp. <laughs> and let's make it 2048 by 2048. Leave it black. This is actual size. Press the home button. Now it fits in the window conveniently. Press shift home. Now it fits precisely in the window conveniently. Press one, actual size again. Control, left, 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 left. Back to the default layout. Man, you are rocking. Once you're in base, come back to object mode. We don't need any longer to be in um, edit mode. Shift F3 and make sure that you're looking at your material node tree type in the node editor. This is what instructs the base. Shift A, let's add a texture. That texture will be an image. That image is going to be what we just made. It's called scalp. Connect it. Done. Hit Control T. If you're smart and you've seen a lot of other videos, you've gone to user preferences and you've already enabled something called the Node Wrangler. Uh, I just assume that everyone is using it. So if you're not, do it because I'm not slowing down for you. Shift F5. Now, where is it? You won't see it until you go ahead and look at a material or a texture view. Whoa, that is not going to work out wrong it is gonna work out just wait go we haven't even made hair yet what do we do give me a second to think make hair or texture paint yeah let's texture paint first now what I'm doing is switching the interaction mode <laughs> good times terminology okay <laughs> where it's black we won't allow the hair to grow where we paint something other than black, we will allow the hair to grow. Now, let's paint. This is where intermediate users might have a little fun watching this video. Are you ready? Let's paint white. Just kidding. Let's paint all red. I'm serious. Let's paint all red. It's that easy. If you're new to the texture paint, the radius of 35 sticks to your screen, so it allows you to do fine, tiny, woo, tiny painting, or broad, huge painting. It takes a little getting used to, and I'm not very good at it. From the initial setup here, this is why everyone can follow with me now, because <laughs> I'm not so good. I know that my axis of symmetry is on the X. If your little axes look like this, your axis of symmetry is on the Y. Um, when you enable symmetry, you paint on one side, it shows up on the other. Okay, red for the scalp. Let's do it. Red, fully, fully loaded. Okay, red one, green blue, zero. Look at this, the value all the way up to one. So what we really need to worry about is the strength of the brush. When I lay a stroke and then lay a second stroke on top, they, um, what's the word? They, you can see it, good. If you want that, keep it. If that's very confusing, then, um, oh, give me a second to think. What is the easiest entry level thing? Okay, here's the easiest entry level thing. Put your strength all the way up to one. Go back into the color and lower your value. Lower your value to 0.25. Now when we paint, it's a dark red. And when we paint over what we painted, you don't get the trick of opacity. So this allows us multiple strokes to create one region of a value that is negative, uh, sorry, of a value that is 0.2. The human hairline um yeah go up a little and uh come out a little forward go up a little and then come forward congratulations now go around the ear and even though you can't see it painting behind the ear it is go backward and go down okay 
now I know we can just sort of fill this using our default 35 pixel thing uh, magic paintbrush that never changes shape unless I don't know did I mention I wasn't very good at this I'm using the default because what it allows is this little gradation Ooh, missed a spot this little gradation right here and we really missed a spot because we're doing this orthographically we missed the whole skunk on top so go ahead and uh, fill that in any way you feel like I'm filling it in very quickly you can spend an hour on this the genesis of this project and in fact this very video is I've been struggling to create haired characters as fast as possible so that I could tell some kind of story as quickly as possible. Um, I've been using drivers for facial animations. That is so much fun to teach myself. I've been using armatures that I create and um, barely, barely good uh, models for faces. So don't expect a lot out of me for a while, but I am learning uh, my way around certain tools and this is one such tool. I'm kind of a fan of sideburns. There they are. So did you make something that looks like a redhead? <laughs> okay. And stop. Now, select a color. Go to RGB. Throw down the red. Click and type .250 in your green. Now, look at the bottom. And uh, do this any way you want, really. You can come down. You go up. Ooh, wait a second. Now two colors are overlapping. Okay, change of plans. I'm glad we're doing this. All the way up, you're green. But now practice a change in strength. So once you press down, don't for nothing lift up. And I haven't actually perfected anything, but it's so much fun. I'm just, I'm just like concentrating painting, thinking about you, wondering what you do on Twitter, Facebook, what the weather's like where you live. Okay, now I've got, um, yikes. Now let's see when I go back down here, it's going to give me a stronger green. There we go. Now that value is 0.25 plus 0.25. That just gave me a value of 0.5. Let's do that with red. Let's go back in, change this thing to red and see what happens if we start adding stuff. Add it in places that make sense. I want you to back up and add it to the side. All the way to the back. Add it to the side and a little bit to the top. You know what this is? This is a haircut. This is a barber layering a haircut. This hair is allowed to be 0.25 in length. This hair is allowed to be 0.5 in length. And here comes a small mistake. This hair can get up to almost a value of one. Now that is going to be uh, very interesting to look at. I kind of enjoy this technique because it allows you to be the world's worst hairdresser. But as you decide what your character looks like, who they are, where they come from, what they do, what is their financial situation, what is their state of cleanliness, you can begin to give haircuts this way instead of other ways. So that's so funny. <laughs> I'm going to put the strength down to 0 0.05 now. And I'm going to draw very gently over the green very gently over some of the red that's already there around the edge given myself there you can see a change up there giving myself a little a little fun I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to look at it from the front I'm probably gonna stop messing around here in just a moment and uh, there give myself a little bit more here okay leave it that's what we got red and green good so I I just, I know, I know I want that green. I want that green. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A little more green, a little more green, a little more green. Go ahead. Give yourself a little more green where you give yourself a little more red. Go ahead. Do it. There we go. Um, there we go. 
Okay. <laughs> Interaction mode. Bring me back to object. Oh my gosh, what happened? Shift F3. Disconnect. Disconnect. Shift F5. Thanks. Now I don't have to look at that anymore. You're right. Next up. Very cool. Let's add hair. New. From emit to hair. Oh no. Don't worry. We've done two things. We have created a vertex group. Let's use it now. Vertex groups. Density. Growth. Sweet. We now have 1,000 hairs coming out above the neck, above the uh, collar thing. Um, and they're shooting through the ear, but they're not coming out of the ear. God, so... <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Now just put 0.5 in your length activate <laughs> hair dynamics alt a it is almost smooth to look at the render no the display change the steps to four or six remembering the maximum is seven good render uh i'm not looking through the camera there we go render I um, want to make sure I'm on slot one, and I will render this. Oh, no light. Too bad. There we go. Glam rock right there. That is uh, curve segments, which is fine. Changing the render to B spline without touching anything else gives us the effect of, and I'll toggle between the other render and the new render. You can really see that this is beast blind this is without good beast blind whoa hit one and uh home to recenter your what do they call this thing your uh rendered image in the image editor we can increase the steps and have a look at what that has done <laughs> It's minimal, but it's important. It's important because we're going to play with children's hair. <clears throat> okay. All right. We got that set. We won't be terribly surprised when our display view shows us what to expect. It will more closely resemble the rendered view. I'm not saying exact. I'm just saying close. Let's do one more thing. And this is the fun... Like, I hope intermediate users love this. Let's add a texture to this hair. Okay, good. Let's call it R. Let us use this and jump to the texture tab and use an image called scalp that already exists. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the texture area and look at the settings for hair. Nothing happens until we click. Pay attention to hair. Now that we've changed some of the essence of hair, shift, left arrow, and alt A. Uh, excuse me? Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. Stop it. Come back. How in the past have I... Oh yeah, mapping. Good. This is why I wanted to do this. I always forget this step. The image mapping right now is using generated coordinates. I'm having you break a rounded cube instead of just using a default shape because when you use a weird shape, which obviously a character would not be a default cube, well, I guess you could, but I wouldn't watch, um, not for long, you have to very specifically create a UV map. Once you use that UV map, choose it explicitly because one object and one character can have multiple maps. Now what's happened? Remember the part of the green in the beard where I was like, oh, let's just add a little bit under the fake chin here, under the fake lips. It's already longer than everything else. These little short pieces, eyebrows. Cool, right? So it gets even cooler. We can control the growth of two hair systems using one texture. If we say to Blender, ignore the green and ignore anything that's blue. Pay attention only to red. And on top of that, really, really, really pay attention to anything that's red. Or don't. 
This number goes from 0 to a 2. It allows you to further adjust the length of growth. And we can use only the green channel for a beard system. Well, that just gives me a perfect idea. Let's name this sucker Scalp. I never quite know where to change the name because it lets you do it in two places. So name them both Scalp. Just like you would do with a material. Come to the Particle tab and create a new particle system. For simplicity, turn off the old one. We now have Particle System 2. We don't want it to be a completely new particle system. We want it to be Scalp, but a copy of it. Now call it Barbosa or Beard. And everything is almost the same except hair dynamics is off by default. The display remained the same and the render remained the same, but the density has to be told again. Pay attention to just the head area. And now they're sharing a texture. We can't have them share a texture because one is using red. We want the other to use blue. So we make a copy of red and we call it I said blue, sorry. I was thinking B for beard. It's actually G for green, but B for beard, whatever. I, I do hope you can keep along. So I'm doing this, all right, maybe that's too confusing. G for green, okay? Let us use this button and go into it. Sorry, man, that's just confused me. No more red. Hey, green. Yeah, sweet man. This little difference that we just did is awesome. Now, the disadvantage to using one texture for multiple hair systems is that when we go in and ever have to redraw the texture, we have some overlap, and that will take like another hour for you to kind of tweak between this one and that one for the overlap. Um, now, here are the two textures together, and I don't think I changed the render to hair. Oh, changing that one to hair. There we go. Okay, so it's changed the name in this little settings window. Nice to know that after I needed to know that. And then uh, this uses hair, so we should be looking at brown. Yeah, rock and roll. Okay. Whew. You ready to make some kids? <laughs> All right. This is really short hair. Let's make kids. This is where now scale is done. Scale is out the window, baby. We <laughs> changed the hair length to 0.5, so technically that should be like one and a half feet. Um... And then we used, ooh, for a length, we used, uh, what, 0.25. So, okay, activate calculator. Point, what am I saying? One, so 18 inches times uh, 0.25 is uh, 72 inches. So, forget it. Uh, times point, didn't I say times 0.25? I don't know, whatever. You know, forget it. Scales out the window. Now we're doing it by feel. Put this hair... Cut hair from your heart. <laughs> Let's use interpolated, oh my gosh, kids, on that particle system. <laughs> and interpolated kids on this particle system. <laughs> -na -na, they're still spiky. Why are they spiky? Because there's one thing left. Oh, that guy, I wouldn't mess with him. He is fierce. <laughs> just, just, just let him keep his axe. We haven't changed the size of the root. The strands width at root is one hundredth of three feet because this scaling is a multiplier for this root and I am assuming that the thickness of one is in blender units so that is three feet thick this scaling is the multiplier so three oh my gosh a hundredth of three you know it's like metric not metric who cares um okay good I put it to point one <laughs> Ugh. anyway I think I should shut up about scale now because we're, it's like hopeless. Uh, okay, why did I create two systems? Hey, new users, when you create hair and you create a beard that may or may not have been cut lately, you know what looks better than this graceful taper on a beard? It's when the tip is roughly the same size as the root. Then it looks more like the hair of a beard. I got my hair cut once, and when the barber got to my sideburns, she got all fussy, and I said, why don't you just cut it? It's just hair. She goes, no, this hair is different 
than this hair. Which leads me to an interesting scholarly bit for this video. There are terms used to describe the areas of the head scalp. The crown, the mid scalp, the forelock, which might be the name of my next character. The important thing is hair from different parts of the scalp grows differently. That's pretty cool because when you're painting your texture, you can keep this in mind. <laughs> mid scalp, this all looks like phrenology to me, but you can keep this front top small crown expanded crown zone in mind and do your own research in <laughs> the donor area. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hmm. I do love a surprise. Um, and if all else fails, you can just draw in your own head like that guy. All right. That's too funny. Um, har, har, har. So that's why zones are safe to use with the colors we did in textures. I only did red and green. You could throw in blue and use blue around the sides. Your donor areas, safe donor area. Gosh, you learn something new every day. Thanks, Internet. All right, let's make kids. Ever made kids before? <laughs> We're looking at uh, the beard, apparently. So let me deactivate the view. Ah, uh, what is clump? It becomes clumpy at the tip at a value of one, clumpy at the base at a value of negative one. Anything in between is stuff in between. Uh, the shape, a value of one, pushes a bullet type shape toward the front. Gosh, this is really not going well for me. Hang on, let's just look at this render, uh, the um, 3D view, Alt A, come on man, where's my, where's my, is it too short? Uh, shape, yeah, there we go. Okay, there I was wrong. So a negative shape does the Eiffel Tower, for example. And can you see this with clump deactivated? No, you cannot. You can see why this is gonna be a multi-part. Shape, mm -hmm coming up uh, for some reason this is not quite as strong as it has been in the past with me but so there's Eiffel Tower and then there's the opposite of Eiffel Tower which looks more like a bullet shape huh interesting interesting I'm just gonna leave the shape where's my I'm getting all sorts of I'm getting some mixed signals from this hair all right forget that so I'm gonna leave a clump at three four actually you know what I'm gonna zero these out because I can't show new users stuff if there's underlying distortion. There is clump noise, but it's so big that it is uh, unusable. Look how big that noise is. It just sweeps the hair right off the guy's face. Uh, clump noise. You could make it small, but then it's like, why bother having clump noise, right? Because it's just... The scale of hair, remember, begins at... 12 feet long very disappointing there is a curve uh, a clump curve that you can use to change it from the uh, bullet shape or the Eiffel Tower shape or the sprouting shape I don't know if you do use the curve both your control points begin at the top and they allow you to decide where the pinch is going to happen whoops and of course you can add a uh, a um, a, what is it? What do we call? Oh, I want to say handle. Yes, you can add a handle. And I'm just happy to let you do that on your own. And still not zero. Okay, clump noise. The length of child particles is yet another way you can throw the concept of scale out the window. Think of this final length as a fine tuning that also allows you to mess up. So if you have short hairs hidden among the long hairs, that's what that length does. You can create the short hairs and then restore the long hairs. Um, great for forest animals, perhaps. Parting is funny. This hair recognizes that it is part of a hair system. So it's doing its best to gently smooth out and look flowy and hair-like, while at the same time obeying where it's coming from the vertex groups, the texture maps, and gravity itself. What it's not paying attention to is the polygon it comes from. 
Now, my mistake was uh, in smoothing this down a bit much. If I activate parting, the hairs do their best to get more perpendicular to the face they're coming from. So here they respect the entire system. I'm sorry. Here they respect the entire system. Here they tend to group up based on the polygon they start from. Like I'm trying to get a good example here. It's just a little there. I mean, you kind of see it closing ranks and here it joins its buddies. I tend to keep parting down unless you really need to emphasize the, um, the polygons of your object. Minimum, maximum, have fun. Long hair, a little weird. Uh, a difference in behavior and also it shags the edges. I, I have not actually made sense of that. I just know that I don't need it because I can do the same thing here. Almost. Almost the same thing. It's just like a button to push. A roughness curve. Um, I've been so busy playing with the children that I've not messed terribly with the roughness. Next time we'll do that. Let's curl. <gasps> You're right. Oh, man. The scale's going to bite us in the ass. Here we go. Amplitude. The... It's so hard to explain when it behaves so weird. Frequency maximizes it. It maxes out at 10. With a high frequency. You know what? Default is 2. Shift, left arrow. Very important when we start changing the children that we jog between frame one and frame two every time we make a change so that the new thing that we've done has a chance to reset the spawn position. I'm calling it the spawn position because it's a particle tab. And some things that you change will really, really, really change like drastically. Uh, this is, um, it's kind of maddening. Oh boy. So frequency of 10 and the amplitude is the radius of the curl. The radius of the curl is tight. Then you kind of get yourself a little tight beard shape. The frequency well, think about it. It's not only the direction, but it's sort of the frequency of everything. Uh, these are very smooth in rendered view. These are very choppy, and it's killing our ability to make good hair. This is a problem of display. Display maxes out at 7. I shoved it to 7, and now... Our display comes to a point that is not terribly far from the render, but our display now exceeds the render. See these hard corners at the ear? Don't be scared. If one goes to seven, maybe the other should go to seven. Ah, drinking coffee. Let's add some light and do that again, shall we? Hey, there's no light. Um, all right, a quick and really dirty hair. A quick and really dirty hair thing. Let me just play this for a second. Okay, so that is a resting position, not a spawning position. Quick and dirty hair material. This is not something that I uh, really promote, but it's something I've been using and it's just sort of acceptable. Oh boy. Uh, shift A, let's make a gloss shader. Good. Shift A, let's make a translucent shader. Good. Shift A, let's make two mix shaders. Here's one for diffuse and glossy. Shift D to copy it. Glossy and diffuse will mix with translucent. These two will mix based on a value of something pleasantly tiny, like 0.05. These two will mix based on an input that is hair information. And I'll tell you right now, we're using intercept. That intercept is very hard to see and very weak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it looks, oh, I guess I could do that up here. 
<sighs> Just setting it up for you, baby. Okay, and it looks like that. Uh, no, it doesn't. That's strand. And it looks like that. <laughs> so you can see that there is a change happening here. Where the hair and children intercept, the signal is stronger. Let's get more kids. Let's have more kids, can we? Am I on the right particle system? Totally, you're forgiven if you get confused, because it really does get kind of challenging. Oh, I didn't change that to 5 and 30. Look at me. Not following my own advice. Follow your own advice when you want to. I'm going to 2,000 hairs, which means I need to restart. So there is spawn position, and here comes a few frames to help it relax and go to rest position. That is... I'm going to go up to frame 48 here. Alright, so that's two seconds of animation time. Here's what is newly intersected. A oh, shift A converter color ramp will help us squeeze the black up into view. Where it is white, it'll be translucent. Where it is black, it'll be a mix of diffuse and glossy. And that will only happen if I actually include the color ramp and the light to make things a little easier. So the color is kind of funny uh, <laughs> because it's glossing white and transluting white as well. Let's mix some colors. I usually don't have a good time doing this, which is why I'm just sort of giving it to you quick. I want to do kind of a 50-50 mix so I get a lighter value of uh, that color. Mm, translucent. I might do the same thing here, which I don't typically do, but there we go. So when you look at the whole thing and you find your light, <laughs> why am I not? I want to look through my camera. Oh, this view is not locked camera to view yet. Where's my light? Come on. Where's my lamp? Oh, it's right on top of his head. That's a bummer. <laughs> Ouch. So only by looking straight up into the light will you get a sense of what your translucency is doing. I have a big, strong shadow. Uh, my translucency settings look as though something desperate is missing. My light... And voice overing in an attempt to salvage some of the crazy ending. Um, what you're looking at below the voiceover here is what I ended up with before I could even manipulate the children to systems with a, a color change and uh, that's happening now as I speak. I really enjoyed setting up and showing some of the flaws and I hope that you meet with some great success. I'm really looking forward to the next video where we dedicate the entire hour perhaps to just doing children. I didn't save this file and tested Blender's patience. By the time I was changing the scale of the tip of one of the systems, Blender devoured both hair systems and I never got them back. Lesson learned. Your subscriptions and your likes are fantastic. I'm learning a lot from your comments and interacting with you. I hope I see you around the internet and uh, let's get that part two practice in the meantime. Thanks for watching.